Hello, everyone. My name is Christopher Anatra. You know me as the quantum businessman. I'm with Sonia from the Tree of Knowledge and also Sean Bond from the Psionically. And we're going to be talking to you about the April 8th solar eclipse because write this down on your calendar on April 8th, starting at 2 p.m., we are going to do a live event covering the eclipse and talking about all different cool things. And Sonia is going to mention what she remote views, and I'll talk about what I tune into. And I know, Sean, you're going to be in Egypt at that time, but hopefully you'll be able to uh, make a connection with us and talk to us as well. So solar eclipse, April 8th. And now, a lot of you guys know who I am. So Sonia, real quick, give a quick introduction as to who you, as to who you are so people can understand um, your input and what you're going to provide to us. Hi, I'm Sonia from the Tree of Knowledge, and I'm a remote viewer. And I'm going to be looking here to see what's out there. <laughs> and we'll be looking into all kinds of things that this is going to indicate for this time frame for April the 8th. Thank you, Sonia. And Sean Bond, give us a little introduction about yourself. Hello, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right, hey. How, how's everyone doing? I'm Sean Bond of Sonic League, SonicLeague.com, YouTube. Uh, you know, uh, collecting all the different equations and blueprints for psionic abilities and trying to bring them out to the world. Uh, yeah, I'll be in uh, Egypt uh, doing a uh, big superhuman love activation thing and going to different temples and uh, pyramids and stuff. So I'll see if I can do uh, base point from there. Where are you guys going to be? Uh, and uh, yeah, glad to be on the show. Thank, thank you, Sean. Where are you guys going to be at that time? I'm going to be. I'm going to be in my office. I might be taking cover someplace because you know some solar eclipses may not be like other solar eclipses. Sonia, what about you? What are you tuning into about this particular solar eclipse? My main thing is that it's the marking of the end of a time between 2017 and 2024. And we'll talk more about that because I really don't want to be letting anything out of the back. So it's a marking of time and it's got everything to do with humanity and where we were and where we are now. You know, that's very interesting because uh, the last time we spoke on the Symphony of Realities podcast, you were alluding to something that would happen to the NPCs. Like I, yeah. I believe after you know, that time period and afterwards. And we don't have to talk about it now. We can talk about it on the show. But yeah, I know people have even writ written to me questions like, what did Sonia mean? What's going to happen? So <laughs> another reason to tune in, right? Yeah. So, we'll leave that for the show so they'll have a reason to come watch. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, what's really interesting too is a lot of people have been talking about the X, right? The X marks yeah. the spot where the 2017 co comet, the path of that one crosses over the path of the 2024 comet. And what could that actually mean? Now, I wanna mention a few things about that. One is that where that X location is, is in Southern Illinois. Um, one of the areas is called the Shawnee National Forest. And for those of you that haven't heard of it, it's a very interesting, uh, one of the things about the Shawnee forest, you tell me if you can see this. There's an yes, area there. Okay. Garden good. of the Gods. Garden of the Gods. There's a special area in the Shawnee National Forest called Garden of the Gods, which is this very unique uh, rock structures. So I thought that was really interesting. This is going to be over the path of total totality and also where the 2017 eclipse passed as well. And What's interesting about that as well, I'm going to bring up another picture here. Um, part of the Garden of the Gods is this thing. It's called the Devil's Smokestack. And this is in, in that rock structure. It's a, very, it's a very interesting rock structure that they talk about how it was formed. But I thought, okay, this caught my attention because there's also something else that's going to be occurring then. I'll bring up another picture for you guys to take a look at. And this is um, a comet. Now I'm bringing this up because this particular comet known as Comet 12P Pons Brooks 
is um, going to be directly between the sun and the earth during this time period. And there was just a news release on spaceweather.com today about how this comet has started to act very peculiarly. What's happening, it's starting to spin. They say it's spinning like a lawn sprinkler and it's making these really interesting designs. And Sonia, I know that we, we've spoken or you've spoken about the holographic projection that we see in the sky and what that is. And the way I see everything, like everything's a holographic projection, you know, the way I see it. And then everything we see in the sky could at least be considered information. Yes. And I was wondering, like, do you have any input? I'm going to show one more thing about the Oort cloud in a minute, but, and I'll explain how that could be related to this and the, a, a possible, like a Dyson sphere type thing that's around the solar system. But do you get anything when you remote view or any insights about this comet? When I, when I see that thing right there, the first thing I'm seeing is it's starting to do like a, a, a spiral thing like this. Right which has to do with humanity and leveling up and becoming the new human. And I don't mean Borg. I mean what we were supposed to be um, because of the change that's happened from 2017 to 2024. Did you know that it takes seven years for your body to replace itself through cell replication? And would you know that from 2017 to 2024, it's seven years? Good point. Yep, that's a very good point. So, yes. Yeah, so is it possible that the DNA structure in our cells is changing? We're producing absolutely. more amino um, acids? Yes, yeah. absolutely. And we have proof of it. All you have to do is go and find out where are your kidneys located <laughs> now and other body parts. We have been ascending into our new bodies. I totally agree with that. And Sean, um, do you have any input, if you were to tune into this particular comet known as Comet 12P slash Pons dash Brooks, do you get any insight? Did you take, do you have a picture of this that you can put in the chat or something that do I can tune see, into? Do you see what's on the screen? You have a, um, okay, I see it. Which one is it? Is it the brightest one? Okay. Yeah, I see you now. All right. Um, yeah, thanks. Uh, okay. Yeah, let me uh, give it a shot. Okay. And and uh, Sonia's going to tune into it as well? Yes. All right. You know, and well, while you guys are both tuning into it, I'm just going to, I'm going to show like one, let me show one more. I've got more pictures, but I'm going to show another picture here. Um, this is something called the uh, Oort Cloud. O O R T cloud. It looks like a type of Dyson sphere that's around the entire solar system. And what astronomers who study the night sky, what they've been able to deduce is that it seems to be made up of fragments of planetary bodies, perhaps even maybe planets that were destroyed. I, I don't really know, but it, they call it the home of comets. So when a comet enters our solar system, it had some kind of origination point in the Oort cloud. And if it was part of a planet, you know, just as Earth has many realms, um, could that fractured part of a planet have realms within it as well, which means could a comet have realms from another world? And it's all how we perceive things, you know. Um, just think of it as information. Think of galaxies and as you, know, you can see with the telescope as information but maybe it's something a little bit different, but the way it's presented to us is in that holographic projection. So, yeah, so if either of you would wanna start with something, whoever is tuned into something first. Um, the one thing I am gonna say is, you know, throughout history, we've had things coming from the sky, like crickets, fish, locusts. Oh, and that right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they just come through. Yeah. That's coming from the bigger earth. And that's also a part of that I think it's a depiction of like stacking dolls, a world within a world, within a world, within a world, within a world. Yeah. Yeah. And you were going to like in the future for your Patreon groups, you were going to get more into that, right? 
Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I'm going to go into the bigger earth, which is known as the cosmic egg, even though it's kind of shaped like an eyeball. And I'm going to go into a deep dive on that on my Patreon. So, Sean, is there anything about uh, that comment that you've tuned into? I know I'm putting you on the spot a little bit, but. Uh, yeah, um, at least at the moment, uh, there's going to be layers, which each, each, with each person that tunes into a thing, will be granted access to something that they're allowed to tune into. There's likely more, especially with how big of a space it is, um, and where it came from, its origin, all that. Uh, at least with the first thing I'm tuning into, it's got some psychic amplification technology on it. Like I'll, usually I'll find, you know, macrocosmic bodies have a purpose um, and then their timeline of what they become, even if they were planets before, uh, kind of mapped out for the, a part of greater consciousness. Uh, and all these things are alive, even if they're in a, in a coma after a destruction or something. Uh, a lot of asteroids and comets will have their own realms, mystery schools, authorities, realms are layered on top of each other. Uh, beings that have an interaction with it as they grid places as uh, bodies move throughout whatever you want to call it space or void or uh, the the place between creations um, so I'm reading like a what could be uh, described in a different way of looking at macro earth crystal technology or whatever uh water or uh different com compounds that make this thing uh it it acts psychically like a crystal ball that tunes to a type of plasma emitting off it that like i would like to know more about the science of comet uh dust ice plasma what the hell creates a, the luminescence effect because that seems to be a lot more bright than uh you know should be happening if you think of physics that we know um so it seems to be a some type of looking glass crystal ball see into window of another dimensional realm of some type that that's like where this specific frequency of plasma being emitted by this comet is tuned into and what are the realms uh places dimensions life forms uh or consciousness that inhabits that expression throughout space and time uh is like another playground in a type of plasma light being of some type. Uh, and then they have some cool capabilities that have to do with this um, asteroid. So that's what I'm tuning into at the moment. Yeah, no, that, that's... How about you guys? Yeah, that's 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 very interesting. I was getting that there was a, a connection even to, to Lyra um, with this. Um, anything else you wanted to add? about the comet, Sonia? The main thing is that it is marking a time. It's got everything to do with humanity. And we will be coming to the end where we will now be set into our new avatars. I, I like that. For the next round. <laughs> yeah, I like that because I've heard about the whole concept of going from homo sapien which is composed of six electrons, six neutrons, and six protons, the 666, a carbon-based avatar, to homo luminous, where we join all of our chakras together and become a pillar of light. So yeah, yeah so that whole concept, like all these, all these pieces start to fit in, right? All the puzzle pieces. Yeah. The other thing too is this whole concept of, of X, right? X marks a spot. I keep hearing about X all the time. E Elon Musk <clears throat> has SpaceX. He changed the name of Twitter to X. X. One of his sons is named X. 
So, you know, there's this whole- and every thing. pirate map has an X. X every marks the Twitter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and X is Roman numeral 10. Yep. So nine is the last of the single digits. 10 starts something new, starts the, the double digit numbers. So mm -hmm. could that all be related? And then oh, I yeah. was too, I was I too. Think so. Absolutely. Absolutely. One of the big things I'm getting about this that's coming in now, because I didn't even know about that, is that that's where it all began. That's where it all began for the disassembling of humanity, the takedown. It was in that section and where it began, it shall end and then rebegin again. That's interesting. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. That um, just came in it's like, okay, this is where it all began. It's now it's going to end there and we're going to, we're going back up and we're going to become what we were once. Okay. There's usually like dates that go along with the passing uh, by the comet to us of world events and the, the elites like to look at that. So there might have to do with that. And since it's having a name thing throughout history, then I mean, there, there'll be some more information probably on why it's been called different things. A lot of things are called devil that aren't misunderstand like the devil's tower and Wyoming and the giant yeah. tree stump and the other you know, a lot of things I've ran into. So uh, it doesn't necessarily mean anything evil. Uh, evil is an incursion factor on reality. So they usually don't er own anything. They they invade, corrupt, possess, and whatever else. So that might be, if anything. But I'd, I'd be one, wondering if they're just trying to create fear and program the events to be something that they want it to be. That, you know, even numbers, they evil they didn't create any of them. So they just hijacked them, word of symbols, etc. So uh, there'd be probably something more ancient in it. Uh, I, you know, like how comets, anything that gets closer to us uh, in like a macrocosmic body, like even people, if they get closer to you, they'll have an effect. You, you feel uh, when somebody hugs you, it amplifies love, it amplifies connection, support. And there goes Sean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's back. I also okay. get that. I, I will add this, Chris. I also Can you hear me? That... Okay. Yeah, I'll, 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 we'll let Sean finish. He just okay, came Sean. Back. Yeah, we. Oh, I went out? What the fuck? Yeah, he, yeah, used to, he disappeared. I, we had a timeline change, I believe. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Okay. When, when did I go out? What, what was the last word you heard? Oh, like literally just 10 seconds ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, you know, I'll, they're, they're evil corrupts, so they didn't make anything. They're not that creative, so they'll Ooh, steal cut, stuff and they'll the program feed. fear. Cut the feed. Sean's talking about yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they'll, cut, they'll cut it fear. And every time like a macrocosmic body comes close, it will have a big change on us, our consciousness even more intense with what the codes and the structure and the programming and what it's good at. Same thing with people. If they get closer, they start hugging you. You'll like, they'll rub off on you. If they're feeling love, you'll feel that love. It will, it will create a change. Uh, you know, like people like being around each other and uh, earth is, you know, all the, the, whatever you want to call them uh, structures in uh, time and space uh, that hold uh, space for life or whatever or consciousness uh, like earth or whatever uh, you want to call it realms it will uh, you know have a greater effect uh, like cells frackling down uh, on the like people of earth or the consciousness so it's all, all, all evolutionary goal oriented hey let's grow together and the closer in dance with the cosmic bodies that we get like uh the binary star system thing uh with us and sirius where it's called the coming of the second sun and uh the procession of equinox the great great year and uh, coming out of the iron age towards the golden age is getting closer to the star sirius a 
which is the closest star to you know solar system to us uh and uh like when we get farther away from earth our consciousness going uh more dark and down and uh like you know the regression of from egypt being at its tops top of its civilization to getting less and less uh intelligent over time and falling and then uh yeah same thing throughout civilization some rises some falls and then the progression of consciousness as we go through the sine wave of light and dark same thing with little uh, bodies, like macroly and microly going down. They all have an effect the closer they get to us. So you can see what it's good at and then what its agenda is and what it, it, it does omnidirectionally. And as it gets closer to us, it will have a bigger chance to have a greater effect on the timeline. And that can be even seen if you look up the dates that it, it passed closest to us in the past and then look up on like wikipedia oh what what things happen then oh a big ass war a, a revolution uh, like a big stock market crap. what what's going on so there'll be some things that elite like to look for in that too okay that's that's great thank you sean i'll have to look up the last time the comet 12p ponds brooks passed by and and what that what that meant but Sonia, you were going to say something as well. So what were you going to say? Um, I, I get that one of the main reasons when things are called like the devil's horn or the devil's peak, it's most likely done by the indigenous that were there because of a memory. And they labeled these things because of a scenario that happened there and say some horrific thing happened there. And then it'll get this bad name because the indigenous of the area are like, okay, you don't go there because we have we have bad history of something happened here and they'll give it names like that in different parts of the snow globe for events that have passed. And it's usually the human beings that are naming it. Tribal human beings, mostly. By the way, um, Sean, I just looked up the last time Pons Brooks passed us was 71 years ago. And that brings mm -hmm. us to 1953. So, mm -hmm. Um, I'm not sure quite what was happening in 1953, whether publicly or in secret. I am. <laughs> Sonia, what do you tune into with your special remote viewing skills? Instantly. 1953 was when the um, elitists who are running everything came together and decided that they were going to forge forward for a conquering of an entire species run by the reptilians. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Yes, that's when uh, that's when an alliance was struck between the reptilians and the humans in the high places of government. And they were supposedly speaking for us because, you know, you have the yin and the yang running on both of those. You have the good guys and the bad guys. And then you have good extraterrestrials and not so great extraterrestrials. That's when an alliance was forged with them. And it was a, a, a takedown of humanity. And now that they're involved in that, there are a lot of them that want to be not involved with it because they're, they ha they bit off way too much than they can chew. And that's when all the terrible things in humanity started happening. We, we are the chattel, the cattle. What can I say? Okay. That's, that's really cool. You tuned right into that. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And then this 71 years will mark the end of that, right? Yep. Plus the seven yep. years from 2017. Yep. Yeah. One of the main things about this this event going on and what has been tried to be prevented with the you know what was so that we would never get to the point where we would start to ascend and our bodies have ascended. They're ascending now. They have been ascending and everything has been thrown at us to make sure we don't get to that point. Too late. <laughs> yeah, too late. Too bad. <laughs> Chemtrails are not working. Yeah, exactly. Um mm -hmm. One of one of the things that I was tuning into just to add more intrigue to everything you guys are talking about is I was getting that there is going to be a portal that was opened on that date. And even okay. may, maybe specifically in that southern part of Illinois where Shawnee National Forest is or there's other locations there. Then I was trying to track back where is that portal from? And you know what I was getting? I was getting what some people call Nibiru or the brown they call it, it's the brown dwarf star that is in a binary system with our 
with our sun, like they they orbit each other. Us and it also people have called it planet X. Mm. Another X reference. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, so I was getting that, what that exactly means. I'm gonna tune into that more before the show. But I thought like Nibiru. And then I'm like, oh, it's also called Planet X. And all this X stuff was coming up for me. It's also called the Black Sun. Did you not connect that? <laughs> no. <laughs> wow. The intrigue gets even more. Wow. So it's it's gonna be quite quite a day of that solar eclipse. Um oh yeah. Oh, I know, oh yeah. I know that I've been hearing that school systems that are in the path have already closed school that day because they realize wow. that everyone's gonna be outside watching the eclipse. So they just like of course. close the schools. Of course. So it seems like <laughs> It seems like the global narrative is like really hyping this up. Like they mm -hmm. really want people to look at the at the eclipse. And I wonder if there's like another reason for that. That's Do you remember in 2017 when we had that one eclipse and you walked outside and you're like, Ugh, and then I you know. had to leave? I know. Me too. I, I ran back in the house. Yeah. Because what it did was it was sending out signals for us to start to ascend. And no one ever said that was going to be pretty and not messy and painful. Ooh, that's that's a nice way to look at it. It's like childbirth. It ain't pretty. It's messy and it's painful. <laughs> that is totally true. As someone that experienced so, that at least twice yeah, in my so life. Yeah. When this eclipse happens, I'm not getting we're gonna have the pain anymore because we've already made it to that point. We made it to that point. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So so I'm just gonna invite everyone again, April 8th, which I believe is a Monday. Starting at 2 p.m., we're gonna we're gonna broadcast live on my Quantum Businessman channel and on Sonia's Tree of Knowledge channel. We're gonna do have like a dual live, so you can watch us on either either one. Sean's hopefully gonna be able to you know tap in in Egypt, and it should be like a really fascinating show. It should be really cool awesome. for everybody to watch. So awesome! Maybe, I'm looking yeah. forward to it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and Sean, is there anything you want to say in conclusion about all these things we're talking about? Solar eclipses, comets, Roman numeral two, <clears throat> uh, portal. Um, yeah, don't be afraid of cosmic events, even if they're um, there's going to be, you know, fairly big shifts or events or utilizations or rituals or. Um, mass uh, rituals or like elite do some type of sacrifice or something whatever um it's all going to be like a small local event i can't because they can't like spread big things but uh um our ability to stabilize and integrate uh the upgrades uh and bring to order the new chaos or the new changing energy that goes along with par for the course for how humanity operates so everything will be all right and uh uh even if there's you know uh, with every upgrade there's usually a AOC event because the dark are like oh everyone's getting upgrades let's try to steal them from them yeah. and so if you deal with feel pain and suffering and all that you can find wherever the core of it is how it's getting into reality like what aspect of you it, it's interacting with like a negative emotion or an event or trauma or something and then heal that and give that sense and fortress it and um and make it so that they can't attach to you as you detach from them and let go and uh, empty your cup so that the new a uh, positive upgrades or more of yourself comes in is usually with uh like this this could be a bunch of new spirits coming in through a chain of different places uh, and uh you know as more spirits come in to be like support uh usually if the macrocosmic bodies are operating well usually they do so there's usually a divine plan to it all so you can like look at all different angles and as you understand it all you get into knowing that uh there's going to be some great things that uh the earth needs that will eventually of like all kinds of swing effects that will bring us to where we need to be. Exactly. Thank you, Sean. It's onward and upward from here. 
So yes, it is. Yeah. I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> And if you guys have any questions for Sonia or myself or Sean, leave them in the comments below and we'll go through and we'll ask those questions and we'll get, you know, so it's going to be as interactive as possible. We're going to make it so that because it is live, you can also ask your questions live as well and we'll respond to those. So it's going to be a great show. I can't wait. I can't wait. I See can't you. wait. I'm ready. <laughs> All right. See everybody then. Bye.